Out on the bluegrass, Kentucky at home, and now, just over an hour away, could a second top five team be in trouble? This time, the home state team trying to pull the upset. Welcome to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. This is a sonic blockbuster on ESPN. Blackout conditions in the KFC Yum Center. Crowd in black. Louisville wearing blacks against number two Duke tonight. The ACC has turned into a horse race. You know they love a good horse race on the bluegrass. Duke hasn't finished first in the ACC regular season since 2010. Virginia's staying in the mix. But the Blue Devils have surged back to the front while others are starting to spit the bit down around the Virginia Tech Florida State level. But Duke is on top with a 9-1 record. Glad to have you with us. Ought to be a great night in Louisville tonight. Reese Davis here at the Yum Center. Duke is in its second game of the toughest six-game stretch that any team in America will face this year. They've already cleared the first hurdle by winning at Virginia. Tonight, they'll have to do it again. But the Blue Devils' strategy on the road generally can be they have Zion and you don't. Jimmy Dykes on how to deal with the Duke big fella. Reese, it is hard to guard Zion Williamson. He is a load at 6'7", 285. How's he getting those numbers right there? He's a power driver between the pipes, and he goes left or left. Or if he goes right, he's going to spin back to his left. If he starts left, he's going to stay left. On that left block, he is a beast, especially turning to his right shoulder with terrific spin speed, a high productive score from that left block. As an offensive rebounder, he is a star. On offensive putbacks, he's shooting 75%. His second jump is exceptional. Brooke, Zion Williamson, hard to guard. Thank you, Jimmy, and I am here with head coach Chris Mack. And Chris, there's so many offensive weapons on this Duke team. They might be at their strongest when Zion gets the ball in the middle. How do you keep him out of the paint? He's got to do it as a team. You know, he's a terrific player. He plays downhill. Um, but we just got to do it as a team. Not one guy is going to be um, the guy assigned to stop him. We got to be able to build walls around him and then keep him from getting second shots as well as the rest of their guys. Thank you. Brooke, Chris, thank you very much. Chris Mack in his first season as a head coach at Louisville, and boy, have they exceeded expectations up to this point. We are ready for tip of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. Duke wearing the white on the blackout evening for the Cardinals. Of course, after the Virginia win, R.J. Barrett said they love wearing black on the road because it's their funeral. <laughs> yeah, it That's is. <laughs> That's the swagger that this young Duke team <laughs> plays with, and uh, they have backed up their words with powerful action so far. We will know early if Duke has flushed that Virginia win out of their system. Not easy to do. Very impressive by Virginia last night to bounce back and go on the road at North Carolina. We take a look at tonight's starting line. It's brought to you by Geico. A strong move to the bucket can't be finished. Graduate transfer guards, Quan Four and Kristen Cunningham, Sutton, Wara, and Williams. Wara among major conference players, the most improved in terms of increasing scoring average from last year to this year. Marquise Bolden for three, a rare shot. They left him alone. And Kristen Cunningham, the grad transfer from Samford, takes it away. Louisville is going to keep their defense tight and aggressive all night long. I know Duke made those 13 threes against Virginia, but throughout their season, they are a seven threes per game team. Cam Reddish, who shot it very well from three against Virginia, stumbled. Now Reddish fires one up and can't get it to go. If you have a look at the Duke starting lineup, familiar with the four freshmen and Marquise Bolden. The Duke's so hot defensively, especially the last five or six ball games, Reese. They're denying, they're putting pressure on that ball. They play with hot hands, big hands. And Louisville punched the paint in this ball game enough to win. Big fellas taking shots from the outside. Malik Williams missed it. And Duke makes it a one and done. Still looking for our first score. Bolden working against Williams. Here is Jordan Warren, the sophomore from Buffalo. Juan Four, graduate transfer from Richmond. Malik Williams starting his 11th consecutive game. He's been playing very well of late, Jimmy, but loses it now out of bounds. And there is Mike Krzyzewski in his 39th season at Duke, 44th season overall. Five-time national champion and is 
put together a team, Jimmy, that has an uncommon chemistry for a group of young guys and uncommon unselfishness as well. Yeah, it really is. That's uh, you know, you can't deny the talent in that freshman class. They did not miss though on the key things: the coachability, the trustworthiness, the high character. And uh, you can easily miss on those things in recruiting, and Coach K certainly did not with this group. Wara was getting away. Cam Reddish was called with a foul as you take another look at Chris Mack, who visited with Brooke Weisbrod in the open. Chris, in his first season at Louisville, had a great run at Xavier, nine years there, eight times to the tournament, four times to the Sweet 16, and an Elite Eight a couple of seasons ago. Four was dealing with Reddish, an excellent defense by the freshman Reddish, knocked it out of bounds. It'll be Duke basketball, and if you had over two minutes and goose eggs on the board, you're a winner. You won, yes. Boy, the length of Duke, a problem for Louisville early. That's Louisville starts those two small point guards. They were constantly being a mismatch in this game. Reddish, a little mid-range jumper, and Reddish is starting, Jimmy, to figure out how to get his shots. Obviously, it's helped with uh, Trey Jones getting healthy and returning to the line. Yes, yeah, Zion is crazy powerful. That kid is crazy long, seen him for the first time today. That was a two, but Reddish has made three or more threes in three straight games. He had five triples in the game against Virginia last Saturday night. Line four. And Zion pulls it away and lost it. Malik Williams and Reddish was there with the block. And it'll be Duke ball. Duke erases about 16 or 17 possessions per game off of their steals or their blocks. Watch Zion Williamson, best athlete I've seen in college ball in my lifetime. Just the explosiveness of this kid. It jumps off the screen, and in person, his quickness, I'm telling you, he's the quickest guy on the floor tonight. I know how powerful he is, but his first step and his reaction to loose balls and the balls above the rim is exceptional. R.J. Barrett shot it well long. Ball is last touched by Williamson. It'll be Louisville basketball. As talented as these guys are on offense, Duke is holding their opponents to under 39% from the floor. If they do that, it would be the best defensive performance by Duke since 1959-60 season. Well, uh, Reese, they, they have the ability to switch one through five when they want to and keep the ball in front. Wara caught it and drains it. Jordan Wara. Zion lets it go, and Wara has the rebound. Blackout crowd's got a little bit to cheer for. Quan four. Another rebound for Williamson. Well, a lot of contact, wasn't there? At that timeline with Zion on the back of the handler. That's what the crowd wanted. They wanted to see the big fella call for a foul. As big and strong as he is, he doesn't doesn't get into much foul trouble. He's been very disciplined in that regard, though he might have gotten away with one in the last possession. Shot clock at five. Trey Jones. Here comes Cunningham. Four. Driving. Going into the big fella. Second chance opportunity. Stephen Enoch's into the game. And it's knocked out of bounds. And we haven't had much scoring. But we've had some action, Jim. Yeah, we have. And, you know, Louisville gets going offensively. Zion Williamson is a better defensive player than offensive player. He's a hot gambler, but this time the hot gamble allows Louisville to stick a three. Zion doesn't come up with it. War says thank you very much. Release, rotation, result for the cards. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. You are watching the ACC on ESPN from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. Cardinals ranked 16th in the country, taking on number two Duke. The Blue Devils leading the ACC regular season standings. A game up in the loss column on Virginia and North Carolina. Thanks to the timeouts called by NCAA coaches this season, 
Infinity is making a donation to the American Cancer Society. If you look at Chris Mack, who challenged his team in practice this week not to allow second shots to be tough. So they didn't have to play the perfect game, but the effort and the intensity and the concentration had to be perfect, and so far so good, less than five minutes into the game. At least about the effort, focus, and concentration. Yeah, no, because nobody's made many baskets. No, they have not in the... You know, Louisville, the, their game plan is to change defenses after a make or a miss. But Chris was so good yesterday with his guys saying, that's not going to win us the game. Our effort and our fight and our toughness, those are things that we're going to have to match with Duke because those three, those three things Duke do, they, they do it as well as anybody. So far, more combined turnovers than field goals. And still, it's been entertaining. Rarely we say that. Wara driving to the bucket. Can't get it to go. Second yeah. shot opportunity is there for Dwayne Sutton. The reason it started with a paint punch by Louisville. They've been playing catch around the perimeter with their offense. And I'm sure that last time out, Chris Mack said, we've got to get downhill and attack those gaps. Very well done. Brooke, what did you notice from Chris Mack at Louisville practice yesterday? Well, I think what I picked up and just what I've known from Chris Mack is his incredible attention to detail. Even talking to the guys about don't get routine. Every jump stop, every ball fake, every closeout. So it's not just him implementing a new system. It's the way that he teaches it. Chris Mack, is, he's not going to raise his voice. He's not going to try to demean a player or break him down. He just shows you exactly what he wants, and then he has you repeat it until you own it. Brooke, that's how he's been able to pull this team together so quickly. Trey Jones is giving Kristen Cunningham all he can handle. Quan Four can't get it to go. Another second shot opportunity. And the foul is called by Jamie Lucky. It's going to be on R.J. Barrett. Reese, when, when Brooke and I walked into practice yesterday, my, my first thought was Louisville's got the dudes to punish Duke around the rim if they want to. Now, I'm not going to punish in terms of out-rebounding by 15 or 20, but they got some big bodies now. Start with Enoch. They can really get in there and bang. And Duke is a type of team, and especially Zion Williamson. It's like I got buddies back in Arkansas that ride bulls for a living. And if the bull smells fear, it's over. And Duke is the same way. If they sense that you have any tenderness at all, they will knock you down early. And so far, Louisville is having no part of that. But well, this guy at the free throw line, Stephen Enoch, the transfer from UConn, is big enough and strong enough that no one should have to smell fear when he's anywhere in the vicinity. He, yes. is, he is a big, big man, 6'10", 260 pounds. He's got a lot of skills, still learning how to play. And he saw the soft touch from the free throw line. The Cardinals have an early three-point lead, and Enoch is there to get his hands on the attempted lob for Zion Williamson. Ryan McMahon, who's just into the game, it's not to the deck as he's trying to save it. The crowd wanting Morning, a reason we're, call. we're talking about the commercial. There's been so much contact in this game right there. I feel like that's a push from behind. But you're right, Doug Chow, Jamie Lucky, and Jeff Clark. They better lace them up tonight, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, because it is game on. Better, better <laughs> get busy. Zion with his first field goal is powering his way in. Sutton for three. Oh, was knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Williamson. This comes. In. They come in making about 10 threes a game at 38%. Louisville does, and they're not afraid to launch those things. And this is Zion now. Boom, that quick spin to that right shoulder. It is money. Jimmy, that's the point I was going to make. The 10 threes per game from Louisville leads the ACC. Wara can't find the range here. Reddish pushing it. Can't Reddish! Williamson going for the steal, almost got it. Now Enoch, this is, this looks like for just a minute, like a shaky possession for Louisville, but Enoch bailed him out with that left hand. It was a shaky possession until Enoch got his big paws on it, and then he kind of calmed everything down, took his time, no double team came, and shot an unblockable shot with a left paw. How about Cunningham getting in there, and one more time, it's Reddish driving to the basket. Cam Reddish, excellent shooter, but starting to add other facets to his game. A couple of strong drives last yes. couple of possessions. Nice cut, huh? Great look, great cut, good finish by Sutton. If Duke is going to get on top of you defensively and deny that one pass away, you have to do that three or four times a game 
per your guy, not just as a team. Barrett with a big size advantage on the Louisville guards. And Reddish was way long on the three-point attempt. That Louisville defense stays tight, just like Chris Mack talked about yesterday for about 15 minutes. Drive from Ryan McMahon can't get it to go. The vast majority of his field goal attempts from the outside with that one off the dribble. Barrett lines it up and knocks down the three. He was scorching the other night in Charlottesville to start, and R.J. has an early triple. Yeah, he can spin it. We talked with uh, Coach K today about Tom Brady and how even at his age right now, his shot, his uh, throw mechanics, and how he spins that ball. And this kid can really spin it as a shooter. Cunningham missing Barrett. Now here's Trey Jones. Jones on the pull up. Look at Williamson flying in. He'll get another opportunity in the offensive rebound for the bucket. An absolute beast. His second jump, I'm telling you, his second jump is quicker than anyone this year in college basketball and maybe in the last 10 years. And look at the body that he's doing it with. When you say second jump, the guy I think of first is Dennis Rodman. Obviously, yes. Rodman was about the size of one of Zion's arms. <laughs> <laughs> to the right, Williamson can't finish. Takes a big spill. A foul is no good from Barrett. And I tell you, this has been a physical first nine minutes of change. Sutton with the bucket. Timeout called, and this is an infinity timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. Duke with a two-point lead. Chris Mack's team coming to play tonight. Duke has hit six of his last ten shots, holding a two-point lead against Louisville. Well, Louisville doing a nice job of shading the left shoulder of Zion, so now he's going to become a right-handed driver. He does not finish nearly as well with the right as he does with his left. And then watch this. Louisville brings it 94 feet. The ball beats you. The ball beats you. And Duke has to talk about it right now. Their conversion defense, they ran with no purpose. No one stopped the ball. That's a talking, pointing, sprinting game, conversion defense. And Duke really did none of the three. And well, Dwayne Sutton to get to the bucket. He's got six of Louisville's 13 in the early going. Darius Perry is checked in for the Cardinals. Quan four. Just can't get that lid off the bucket. Quan's 0 for 6. And had some good looks. And that was another one. Just wouldn't go down. Yeah, it's twice now that Chris Mack has lifted his offense, Reese. And they exchanged the guards up top in a 1-4 set. Just a simple clear out and drive baseline on the touch. Just not able to finish against the length of Duke around that rim. Headed toward the midway point in the first half. Glad to have you with us. KFC Yum Center, Reese Davis, Jimmy Dykes, and Brooke Weisbro. Trey Jones almost lost it. And R.J. Barrett did. Quan Four is giving Barrett the business right now defensively. You know, you mentioned today in practice that the smaller guards might be able to get up underneath R.J. Barrett and give him some trouble. Yep, just a little bit. And, and Four is a tremendous defender, number four in black. He can Westbrook, and what I mean by that, get over the top of a ball screen as well as anyone I've seen this year. There he is. Perry pull up along the baseline. You have to do some things off the bounce against Duke to offset that pressure. You've got to make sure you have some guys that can just go make a play instead of run plays. Perry didn't have a point, didn't take a shot in the loss to Florida State in overtime on Saturday as Barrett gets in the paint and draws the foul. Saturday, we're going to have three of the top five teams in the country on ESPN. We'll start it at 6 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be the next step in that long stretch of difficult games for Duke as they take on North Carolina State and then number one, Tennessee. They've won 17 in a row. They go to Rupp to take on Kentucky Wildcats. The game just before us, falling to LSU and a tip in at the horn in a sonic blockbuster. And you can see all those games on ESPN on the ESPN app. How about LSU tonight to go into Rupp? And I had LSU Saturday against Auburn. They are fantastic 
on the offensive glass. And they, there's great value in that team. I know Tremont Waters did not shoot a great percentage tonight, but his value in getting the ball up on the rim now allows them to do what they do best, and that's eat up the offensive glass. And Kentucky wasn't able to stop ball on no, that they last were drive, and the tip in got them in a huge win for LSU. Haven't had a lot of success historically on the road against top five teams. Not that many teams do, but huge win for Will Wade and the Bayou Bengals. Perry just hit a shot, gets in some trouble. Perry now open, going to try the three. Rattles out. Williamson with another rebound for Duke. Zuba staying man to man on a miss. 1-3-1 one, one on a make. There's that there it is. spin that you talked about in the pregame. It, it's, it's, it's really unusual how quick this cat is on that left block right shoulder. There's no hesitation on it. If the help comes, it has to come on the air flight of the ball. Once he touches it, it is over. Now you see Duke switch. They'll do a lot of that. Jack White's on the floor too, so they can pretty much switch when everybody's on the floor along with Delorier who's out there now. Here is White. It's been mired in a three-point shooting slot. And Malik Williams blocks away the shot from Barrett. Four on the push. Quan finally gets one to go. Reese Trey Jones didn't run. He jogged the first five steps, and the ball caught up to him. This crowd getting behind the Cardinals. Bring in the energy, Jimmy, after that emotional game against Virginia on Saturday night is a question. Here's Jones. And Delorier gave a big push to Malik Williams, and the foul's going to be called on Javin. Let's watch the right shoulder quick spin of Zion Williamson. This is a guy that just, again, he gives it up. He's going to simply go down the low block. And now just manhandles any interior defender. The double team is too soft, not enough conviction. Watch Trey Joe right number three. Turn around. Speed, conviction. You can do it. You get two points put on. Reese, it's that time of the year. What time's that, Jimmy? It's it's oh. Jimmy's jet time. Now the jet isn't going to roll out till next week, but it's time to start having some people pass through the TSA pre-check. And right now we're going to clear Tennessee, we're going to clear Duke, we're going to clear Virginia, Gonzaga, and Kentucky. Th those five get to come on through. They don't have to take their shoes off. They can leave their liquids in the bag and all those things. The bad news for Kentucky, they come through TSA pre-check tonight. However, we've already lost their luggage. We've, we've already lost their luggage after I, they lose, you know? I think they were selected for random screening, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, they may have been. Here's some guy, <laughs> here's some guy with, a, with a wand right now <laughs> checking yes, them out. Yes, yes. Those five, though, are going to end up somewhere up there in those top eight seats that are for those one and two seats. And, that Virginia club, the most impressive win of the season so far last night against North Carolina to me. Jordan Mora with his second three, and Louisville moves on top. Mora averaging better than 17 and a half per game. That's a dozen more right at it than he averaged last year. Best among major conference guys in terms of scoring improvement. Marquise Bolden working for it and knocking it out of bounds. And Mora son of a coach and just a terrific offensive player. Well, he's got good spin on the ball as well, and Zion kind of lost track of him just for a split second. And his kid is 6'8", and he kind of backs up into his three-point shot, and Zion could not quite get to it. There's the improvement that we mentioned, not only in scoring, he's always been a terrific offensive player. As Cunningham turns it over, but the rebounding has improved. Some of that is due to more minutes and more consistent minutes. And the reason he gets those is because he's become a more attentive defender. A absolutely. Chris Mack set him down and said, listen, I, the, 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 I, I'm going to set the rules with you early. I know you can score, but it's going to be hard for you to score sitting on the bench. And he's no longer a defensive liability. He's actually pretty solid on this end of the floor. Ray Jones has been pretty quiet on the offensive end. Got caught napping a bit on defense, which is not characteristic of one of the best defenders in the nation. And Zion goes underneath the basket, reverses it in, and Duke's back on top. And just has a knack to get to that left hand anytime he wants. And he's right now attacking away from the gap, Zion is, as opposed to where the built-in help is. 
How about the big fella, Stephen Enoch? That's something he can do. He's a 43% yes. three-point shooter. Now that, that's what they're supposed to look like at the next level. That's a big body <laughs> dude that can pick and pop, and that 40% is true. He has a very good release. Watch out. Steal by Warren. Williamson has 10. How about the pivot power of Zion Williamson? Went with one bounce, and once he put that pivot foot down, he just went to work. Zion's hit five of nine from the floor, shooting right at 70% in ACC games. He does it again. The big fella's into double figures. Reddish, no answer. Wara, and it's a tie-up possession arrow pointing to the Blue Devils. Very simple offense out of Louisville by Chris Mack. Simple but effective. A high ball screen and a sprint away three by Stephen Enoch. He doesn't casually walk to the catch spot. Watch, the screen is set. And there it is, a nice little shuffle that time with a lot of time. Boulder recovers late. That's easy offense that Duke has to communicate much better. Either switch it, whatever, but now you have a 40% shooter up top setting the ball screen that Duke has to make an adjustment to. It's not that he takes a ton of them, but you see the touch. Stephen Enoch has a lot of gifts as he continues to develop as a player. Limitless potential for him, and there's going to be an illegal screen calls. Doug Shouse, I believe, gets DeLaurier on the call, and it is Javin. I believe that is his second. Yeah, you know, DeLaurier is just going to run. It's just that last step to the left, trying to roll his guy down, and Doug Shouse right on top of the call. That's been a heavy emphasis all season long. The good news, if Duke football coach David Cutcliffe is watching, he now has tape to show his pulling guards. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's a heck of a football coach, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, David, is. yes, what he's done at that program. New coach here at Louisville, Scott Satterfield, for the first year. Not New close. basketball coach is doing well on Chris Mack. Pretty alive here in the Ville tonight, looking for a signature win against Duke. Why not go to Enoch inside? He tipped it up, Williamson fighting for it, and here comes Trey Jones. R.J. Barrett. Jones chases it down. Reese, Coach K has been brilliant this year as an offensive coach, not run a lot of sets. Teaching guys concepts, teach, teaching them spacing, trusting their natural instincts that he recruited. And this dude's got some instincts now, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's got them. And it's just Duke's second three-pointer in 11 tries. Somewhere Tony Bennett's probably going seriously, too, of 11 <laughs> in the first half. But the second one coming from Zion Williamson, and Kristen Cunningham slipped and was called for the travel. And, man, we have a good one going in the ACC tonight. Duke is on top of the conference at 9-1. and one. Louisville trying to hang in the regular season race. Two-point game. There's Zion from deep. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a Slinger Plus Tots for just $2.99. Zion Williamson has half of Duke's points. Gordon Wara's had a big first half, and he's 
I thought he was going to be called for the offensive foul because he gave a little shove yes, he to did. Reddish and instead Doug Shouse got Reddish for the foul. It's been a low foul game in terms of the fouls that have been called. We have six now altogether. Neither team in the bonus with 3-10 to go. It's the second foul on Cam, so with three and change to go, he'll take a seat. Alex O'Connell, a sharp shooter, is checked in for Mike Krzyzewski, though Alex hasn't played a lot lately, is a dangerous three-point shooter. High 40 percentage, high 40 percent range last year. There he is Perry driving. There's Enoch working on Jack White. White holding his position. Ball. Knocked out of bounds. It was seven on the shot clock. It'll remain with the Cardinals. Chris Mack goes open with his offense, trying to create some driving angles to get inside. Enoch now a, a, a target. Oh, look at this. Fell asleep on the back side. That's a couple of times this Duke defense, which has been so good this year, is caught snoozing. Wara makes them pay, and he's into double figures. There's really no excuse for that, though, even if you're just a freshman. That ball was. Out of bounds baseline for 15, 20 seconds. No one tagged everybody and got body on body. Gave up an easy two. Nice hard hit switch out by Wara. Williamson again for three. This one rattles out. And the Blue Devils are two for 12 from behind the arc. Enoch wants that basketball. He's feeling it offensively in this game. And he's big enough to not be too worried about Zion, that vertical leap. Help contest the shot. There's <laughs> a wall exploded up on Enoch to have to shoot over, huh? Barrett getting in pain, having it knocked away. Good defense by Louisville. Enoch running and scoring. Or I beg your pardon, Wara. I beg your pardon, it's Jordan Wara again running and scoring. Duke going to take the timeout. Louisville playing with intensity. Six point lead under two minutes to go. RD Louisville is so good at attacking the ball with two hands when the ball attacks them. Very well done defensively. Minute 48 play here in the first half in Louisville. Cardinals with their biggest lead in the first half up by a half dozen. Jordan Goldwire, number 14, is checked into the game for Duke. R.J. Barrett missed the reverse layup. Wara, oh, what a bounce pass to Perry. Perry with a finish. How about that pass from Jordan Wara, who's doing a little bit of everything. When the ball was driven baseline, Trey Jones should have started coming towards the timeline, and he didn't do it. Cost his team two points. Goldwire misses from the corner. Flora has it again. And the foul is going to be called on Goldwire. Jones is a terrific defender. As soon as that ball got driven, he's got to start going towards that timeline to get himself in the defensive play position. He doesn't do it. And a beautiful pass out in front for Perry. flora has got 12.6 rebounds and that assist. The N in his name is silent. Nothing else about him has been silent tonight. <laughs> nice screen. This is a really good passing team, and they are cutting up Duke right now, Jimmy. Fouls called. They're going to get Perry for kneeing, using the knee and knocking Jones off balance. And I think the crowd had hoped they would get a travel call. It's the first blackout in the history of the Yum Center. They may want to do it a few more times going forward, you think? <laughs> they did. So far, so good. After what Barrett said <laughs> at Virginia the other night, you know, Duke not getting to wear their black jerseys on the road. Louisville was quick to point out, hey, you know what? We're unbeaten in our true home whites, and we're choosing not to wear them. Ooh. And R.J. Barrett knocks down a three, and one that 
Blue Devils could use. Just RJ's second field goal of the night. I, I would take the very last shot if I'm Louisville. En enough time for Enoch maybe to get on the offensive glass. And you get around Duke defensively and get that ball to the paint. High ball screen, go to work. You saw him work on this today, He's sort of slipping it quickly. Wara puts it up. Perry! Yeah. With that tip in, Perry just exceeded his average. He had six in the first half. Well, they did it to perfection. You want to take the first shot with enough time to allow for an offensive rebound. You get it up around three or four. There's the first tip. There's the second, very similar to the play at Kentucky before us to decide the ball game. That will be a huge two points when this thing is all said and done. Louisville has brought the fight to Duke in this ball game for the first 20. Brooke is with Chris Mack. Coach, I know a big point of emphasis for you has been getting on the glass, making sure you limit Duke to just one shot. How would you evaluate your team's rebounding? First six, seven minutes, really good. We teetered there for a little bit. Of course, I thought some of the shots they were getting were in the paint. When you're rotating, it's hard to get a body on guys. Finished the half a little bit better, but like that's the story. Keeping them out of the lane, not giving them sex shots. Great, thank you. Brooke, Chris, thank you very much. This team is playing with the attitude. Chris Mack has instilled halftime here in Louisville, 38-29 the score as we go back to Kevin Connors, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams in the studio. You're watching Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile, and this is a sonic blockbuster on ESPN from Louisville. The 16th ranked Cardinals, eight point underdogs, are nine point leaders at the half. 38-29, largest halftime deficit of the season for Duke. Reese Davis, Jimmy Dykes here. Louisville played with great intensity, and Jimmy, they, they hit nine of their last 12 shots from the floor, many of them lightly contested. Yeah, Louisville's urgency has been terrific this entire first 20 minutes. They've they brought the fight, fight to Duke so far. Fast break points have been the difference in this ball game. They've been so clean in their transition. Their conversion offense has been spot on. And uh, Duke's transition defense has not been great. They have not ran with a purpose. They have not ran with urgency. And Louisville has capitalized every single time they've had the chance. And this is a Louisville team that's snapping that ball around the half court. They're snapping it around in transition very cleanly. There's only four turnovers in the first half. And what does Duke have going for him? Well, the best player in college basketball. His, his second jump has been on display in this ball game, and he is a right shoulder phenom that eventually gets back to that left paw about any time he wants. Here's the problem with Duke. Zion Williamson has taken four three-point shots in this game, more threes than anybody else for Duke. They are a little out of sorts, as you told me at halftime. We're ready for the second half, Jimmy, of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup already tonight in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, a top five team has gone down. That was not to the delight of the people in the bluegrass as the Wildcats fell at home to LSU. Now could it be that Louisville could get a second top five team by knocking off number two Duke. Brooke Weisbrod is with us tonight. Brooke, you spoke with John Shire, Duke assistant. I did. And how about these numbers for Trey Jones in the first half? 20 minutes, zero points, one assist. I said, Coach, how do you get Trey Jones more involved in the offense? And he said, listen, we got to give Louisville a lot of credit. They knocked us off course, but we need multiple penetrations on every drive. We got to be the ones setting the tone and being the ones who are aggressive here early in the second half. But so far, it looks like that belongs to Louisville. Brooke Wara knocked down the three, and Duke is facing its biggest deficit of the season. Down a dozen. Ville on the run. Here is Kristen Cunningham. Well, Chris Mack has just caused Louisville fits with that high middle ball screen and different actions off of it. Cunningham couldn't get it to go. Barrett got away with a little shove in the small of the back against Malik Williams, and Blue Devils are quickly into the front court. Boy, Jordan Wara has knocked down three threes tonight. He was 0 for 6 from beyond the arc against Florida State on Saturday, and he has bounced back. Boy, he's had a tremendous season. He has stepped up so far tonight. Step back from Cam Reddish. It rolls out. Wayne Sutton, long pass ahead, and Marquis Bolden's hustling. So, too, is Quan Four. Blue Devils ball. The opening possession by Louisville 
come off of a ball screen. Now, Freezer right here, guys. Look how far Zion Williamson is off of his guy. He gets attracted to the drag, and as a result, Ward just pops up and gets it off. And, and again, Chris Mack getting a lot of stuff now off the middle third of the floor in this ball game. Wayne Sutton draws the foul. This has really been a strong performance for Louisville. Trey Jones called for the foul. Louisville, they did a lot of things right against Florida State on Saturday. Certainly road games, home games, much different, but they were sloppy with the basketball. 23 turnovers led to an overtime loss. But man, they have answered well so far, and they pushed the lead to 13. They, 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 they won every aspect of that game against Florida State, other than 23 turnovers and 32 points off the turnovers by Florida State. And they spent a lot of time, Louisville did yesterday in practice, You've got to get yourself open against Duke. We couldn't get ourselves open against Florida State. Man up, make a man cut, get yourself open, and own your spot. So far, Louisville spot on in those three areas. Wow, what a horse. And one for number one. Zion with 15, chance to make it 16. Now Coach K has put him on both blocks in this game. He's gone left block, and now he comes right block. And this time, he still is able to get his big shoulder squared up. That's just a mismatch, and the double team can't, it just can't come quick enough. You almost have to double team him when he gets to that spot. Because if you even come in on the fly of the ball, Reese, it, it's too late. And there was no hesitation. Sometimes no, you none. see a guy catch and think about it in the pose. Not that time. Jones pressuring Cunningham. Trying to get himself going. You could put Zion in, in any NBA game tonight without any practice, and he's going to get a double-double. He'll get his 10 and 10 somehow in that ball game. Laura drives Zion, and the foul is going to be called on Williamson. On the subject of the NBA, our Wednesday doubleheader starts in Minnesota. Rockets and Timberwolves don't know if you've heard, but James Harden rolls out of bed and gets 30. <laughs> 30 straight 30-point games. Again. Again. Rockets and Timberwolves, there's another one. And the Warriors and Trailblazers later. That's just not being on edge. That might be a little bit of a Virginia hangover going on right now for Duke. But they are totally, totally out of sync in this ball game on both ends. It was a huge concern for Coach K and his staff when we talked to him this afternoon. And how does a young team handle success at Virginia Saturday night and flush it out of their system? So far, the answer is not very well. Williamson, who was called for that foul. That's one that Warren didn't mind wearing. Jimmy overlooked earlier this season. Duke was down 16 to Gonzaga. That was a larger deficit, but the common thread is they were in trouble then and they're in trouble now. Well, they are. They've given up four points in this ballgame on baseline out of bounds under, and Zion has been factored into both of these plays. This was the last one, just not aware at all. Bolden doesn't do a good job of shaping up where the rim is between he and the guy out of bounds. And Zion just not ready to play. And it goes back to Duke just not on edge like you have to be in a road game in the ACC right now. Chris Mack told us today that not that he wasn't confident in his team, but that he wouldn't mind if Duke was caught looking back rather than looking ahead a little bit. And Perhaps that is the case. Looking to the bottom of the bucket is Malik Williams, and now Louisville has matched that 16-point lead that Gonzaga had on the Blue Devils. They are chewing Louisville is Duke up on that ball screen pop action. Malik just knocked down one. We saw Enoch knock down a couple in the first half. Louisville's putting the ball screen in the slot. And two guys go with one, and there's no urgency, no communication. So you have a big at 6'10 who can make a guarded three. Marquise Bolden working on the offensive board, but he couldn't get it to finish, and Dwayne Sutton has it. Keep running it. Keep, keep setting that high ball screen and work off of it. Reddish with a tremendous defensive play. Williamson has it knocked away. Bodies flying from the Cardinals as they run into each other, and they are 
Louisville's playing with its hair on fire. Yes. There's just no other way to describe it. Just that simple play there by Sutton to just not give up on the play. He's chasing down an absolute beast in transition with great speed, and he gets a tap from behind. Long way to go here, but number two is getting knocked around. Barrett working on Quan four. Malik Williams with a strong rebound, and Zion's going to be called on the reach. That's three on Zion Williamson. Reese Quan four is a terrific defender. If he was 6'3", he'd be a first-team All-American defensive guy. He's gotten underneath and has not given anything to Barrett or Rennes in this ball game. He's phenomenal as, a, as an on-ball defender. He Westbrook's ball screens, gets over the top of him. He doesn't need help. He is a problem right now for Louisville or for Duke in this ball game. Double the guys that Chris Mack when he took this job looking around the country and found one of them has the ball now in Kristen Cunningham one four coming from Richmond now here's a steal by DeVorier and Jab DeVorier as it knocked away by Malik Williams and that saved the bucket. Well ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC network in August. 15 universities, one big network. You can visit getaccn.com to learn more. You can see games like this one. Many basketball and football games are going to start with Georgia Tech and Clemson the first Thursday night of the season. And Zion is taking a break with the three fouls. And Delorier, who was fouled on his way to the bucket, and it proved to be a smart foul. He's cost the Blue Devils at least one. Reese, we talked about in the first half that Coach K, you can't deny the talent of this freshman class, but he did not miss on the important things. They are terrific listeners. They have no arrogance about them. They have character. They're coachable. There's no selfish, selfishness within the group. They can beat their tails off. But right now, they have their hands full. Louisville has brought it in this ball game, and, and we're going to see what Duke has left in their tank right now after that Saturday night win at Virginia. You'd expect the pressure of Duke Iwood to increase right now. Louisville better be strong with that ball and have two hands and own their spot on every catch. I low, he knocked inside, working on DeVorier, and he'll go to the free throw line. As big and strong as he is, oddly enough, tonight at least, Stevens done better work outside the arc in terms of making yes. buckets and being able to finish right at the rim. Chris Mack has lifted the length of Duke time and time in this game. He's gotten a high middle ball screen threes, and now he's gotten a high middle ball screen high low plays out of it. And Luke right now is guessing defensively what Louisville's going to throw at him. Jimmy told you earlier what a good three point shooter Enoch was in the number of opportunities he has. He shoots better than 80% from the free throw line. And he's exceeded his season average already with the 11 tonight, averages about nine a game. Yeah, he will make a pro roster someday. That, that body is unusual. It's hard to find. And because he can shoot that basketball, great value, and he can switch out as a switch out defender. Trey Jones. Knocks it down in Louisville, hoping to add to the largest deficit Duke has faced this year. Down 17 with under 16 to play. Enoch going strong and outside the restricted area was DeLaurier in drawing the charge. Hardy, I think it's worth mentioning Duke, their flight was delayed last night for three or four hours. They didn't land till about 12.30. They're just out of sync, I'm telling you. Going to be a happy day at the Creamery tomorrow. Penn State is able to get the win. <laughs> you been there? Oh, yeah, every time I go to have you Happy been Valley, there. are you kidding yeah, me? What question is that? Yeah, what a silly question, Jimmy. <laughs> there will be no ice cream in the postgame for Duke if they can't mount a rally here. R.J. Barrett misses. And as Louisville pushes it into the front court, Jimmy, just before the break, you mentioned Duke's flight delay, the fact that they've been out of sync. Look, we're giving all the credit in the world to Louisville. Absolutely. In sync, out of sync, yes. they're a handful. But if you find yourself in a situation like Duke and you're not in rhythm and the other team's gaining confidence, how do you change the tide? 
Well, you got to go to your two best guys, and we know that's, you know, Coach K has two or three to choose from, but certainly Zion and, and RJ, they, they, they've got to take control of this game. I don't know if they can do it, because Louisville, they're getting anything they want against a really, really good Duke defensive team. Just not tonight. Stephen Enoch. Uh, might be at some point in the not too distant future making himself some money tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a strong move inside. Got it. Jack White charge. Ryan McMahon draws it. And this thing is on the verge of a long way to go. This could be getting out of hand shortly. Chris Mack, to start practice yesterday, took his team over to the video on the floor and said, watch, we can take charges on these dudes. They put their head down and they just attack the paint. Sometimes under control, sometimes not. And Louisville has scouted it out and done a terrific job. Zion right now can only sit and watch. And it may just be one of those nights. Moral working on Radish. They've made Duke work. They haven't taken a ton of quick shots in this game. That is not a good pass, and Duke has the opportunity in the front court. Barrett getting position, he gets fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line and shoot a couple. You mentioned right off the top of the broadcast, Jimmy, that Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils are in the midst of the toughest stretch by BPI standards that any team will face all year. Started at Virginia on Saturday night, this game here. Couple of home games, including the rivalry with North Carolina, and then trips to Syracuse and Virginia Tech. All the games will be on ESPN. But look, as talented as these freshmen are, this is the first time through it. And it's good to go through it with talent. That's a, it's a rough stretch. Then they'll have to maintain their mental focus and their intensity game after game. Well, you know what? When they uh, when Duke made the statement about we like wearing black uniforms on the road because. It's the home team funeral. That, that, that target just got bigger. Am I wrong? No. No. Now, I do think it was just in the moment. It and was. RJ sure. was a little sheepish about it today when we talked to him. But, you know, but it does. And Absolutely. That type of thing. We'll get to it. How about that great bounce pass? Laura to McMahon, goaltending call, and Alex O'Connell. And it is a full 20 spot. Number two is just getting bludgeoned. I'm not sure the rope-a-dope in the hometown of Muhammad Ali is going to work much longer for the Blue Devils. No. They are taking some haymakers. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Chris Mack continues to lift his offense. And he's gotten multiple things off of lifting. And foul is going to be called and rebound on the inside. It's a Louisville team that 23 turnovers at Florida State cost them an overtime game. And they have been pounding it in their heads for the last 48 hours about if we don't value the ball against Duke, it will be over. And they have very few turnovers in this game. They have snapped that ball around clean in the half court. Their bigs have handled it well. Their guards have handled it well. How about Kristen Cunningham? Ten assists in this game and two turnovers? You know what? During the break, we talked about that. That was surprising. It's been a little bit of a... Uh, there's no such thing as a quiet ten assists, but Kristen hasn't scored. But man, has he been has he been effective and efficient running their offense? Yes, and, and that is the that is the worst sign of all time. Yeah, Zion, Zion can't dunk. <laughs> well, incorrect. I should say incorrect. Yeah, the, the most incorrect sign in college basketball this year. That that's true. Can't. Right I'll have to, I'd have to think back. Would it be accurate to say hasn't tonight? I can't remember why. He, right now. he has wrong. not. He hasn't got those breakaway steals to get him going. Barrett going back to the free throw line as he draws the foul. On Saturday, we're going to have three of the top five teams in the country on ESPN. We'll see the Blue Devils against North Carolina State. At the moment, it would appear it will be an attempt to bounce back for Duke against Kevin Keats and the Pack. And then following that, it will be number one Tennessee against fifth ranked Kentucky. Barrett misses the free throw. Kentucky's already fallen on a buzzer beating tip in tonight by LSU at Rupp Arena. Both those games are on the ESPN app. You can watch them anywhere, anytime. As Barrett 
misses them both, and Reddish almost stole it. Lost it out of bounds, and it's starting to look like that kind of night for the Blue Devils, much to the delight of the blackout crowd here at the Yum Center. Already, I've been saying it for about three weeks. Tennessee is the best team in college basketball. I have no hesitation saying it at all. They are the best post-passing feed-the-block team that we have in college ball, and, and it's going to hold up on neutral floor and away games down the stretch. They're a physical old team with unbelievable player-to-player -player accountability. Had the luxury to watch film with them this year. They will call each other out the right way. They ask terrific questions. You'll see them Saturday. They are a real team. And the shot clock getting deep. Foul is going to be called on Trey Jones. That Duke foul puts Louisville in the one and one with 13.09 to play. And this Louisville team is very good from the free throw line. Top 15 in the country at just under 77%. Dwayne Sutton is right around that himself at 75%. What a job Chris Mack has done this year to convince his players I, I, I love you guys. I, I'm not waiting until my second year. We're going to win right now. And he's done a terrific job of convincing his guys of that. Roof might have blown off this place if Warren had knocked yes. down that three. It was a long pass into the front court as Reddish lines up the three and it rolls out. Sutton wanted the lob pass, but Warren couldn't corral it in time. So he shot the three and somehow it rolled out on him. It's been a star of Louisville fan base for the last couple of years. They've been knocked around. And I think they see the value of Chris Mack. The guy already has the number two recruiting class, according to our own Paul Biancardi and our, our group at ESPN. And he signed that class before he ever coached a game at Louisville. Think about that. How aggressive and how confident that this dude is in these new shoes. You mentioned last year, had Xavier. Winning the Big East, getting a one seed. They got knocked out, upset by Florida State in the round of 32, but had great success in the tournament at Xavier in nine years. Made it to four Sweet 16s, maybe to the Elite Eight a couple of years ago. Lost to Gonzaga, who went on to the national championship game that year. Gonzaga team that all of our crew loves, by the way. Some more than others. <laughs> I'm you, on the you positive and I, yeah, side. We, you and I love them. You and I love the Zags. Our producer is anti Zach. How about Coach K going zone down 54 to 36 on the road? He's trying to do anything to change the game for 90 seconds or two minutes. And that didn't work. And Williams is going to get the foul, and that's going to be four on Zion. We haven't seen Williamson get frustrated very much in this. Virtuoso freshman season, and he's been a little frustrated tonight. That's a that's a really, really <laughs> heady play by Malik Williams. But how, he almost got a three-second call yes, waiting on time on the land. <laughs> yes, he how crazy would that have been? You get a three-second call waiting on the dude to come down. It was very close to happening. <laughs> he's only fouled out, uh, been, been DQ'd once so far for Duke, and uh, boy, that interior screening action by Chris, Chris Mack offensively has dialed up. Everything he wants in this game has worked. Reddish can't get it to go, and Blue Devils' woes from three have returned. Brian McMahon, meanwhile, usually absolute money from out there, didn't get that one. Trey Jones, been a rough night for him, has not been rough for Jordan Wara, who's pushing it into the front court. Quan 4-2. Just another effort play by Louisville. All ten guys had the same opportunity to sprint the floor, and the guys in black win the foot race again. Listen to this place, Jimmy. Four to Perry. Why not? Left it on the front of the rim. Offensive rebound, Williams. And it'll stay on this end. What 
a performance by the 16th ranked team in the country. Now they've got to finish it. 11 and change to go. But so far, there has been no stopping the, the emotion high. The Ville soaring and up by 20. Behind those glasses are the eyes of one happy fan, I have to imagine. Louisville has been brilliant tonight. As we take a look at who's flipping the switch, brought to you by Boost Mobile. Jordan Wara came out with his switch fully engaged tonight. He had 17 points, and along with Stephen Enoch off the bench, who's added 14. Those guys have shot it brilliantly. Wara's done a good job on the boards. Enoch, a big fellow who stepped out and hit a couple of threes. And they have dominated this game. Duke has missed his last nine shots. They haven't made a bucket in seven minutes. And they're playing catch up. Duke is on the road using the two three zone. Brooke, you were in Chris Max Huddle. What was he having to say? Well, he said he doesn't want his team to settle for threes, to keep driving, keep trying to get to the line, and still emphasizing rebounding. I'd say that's been the biggest turning point of this game is Louisville's ability to control the rebounding, especially limiting Duke on the second chance points. Duke has now missed their last 10, and Barrett himself has missed 10 of his 12 field goal attempts tonight. He had a couple of threes in the first half, and that's been it. Well, Louisville brought the fight early in this ball game, and they're plus three on the boards right now. But they set the rules of the game. To me, the first five or six minutes, they were going to give Duke nothing in the paint or on the glass in this ball game, and they've continued to set those rules in the second half. Wara kept it alive, and Louisville has a fresh 30. That's just what the ball is going by Hill. That's yep. all it is. That's all it is. The, the, the urgency, the want to. Heeman Black has owned those areas in this game. Under 10 minutes to play now. War of fires and scores again. His 11th 20 point game of the season. O'Connell stepped on the baseline. Tune in to Sports Center right after the game. Steve Levy, John Anderson. I got a feeling Jimmy and I are going to be asked to opine after this one. <laughs> we'll talk about Zion and Barrett's future because I'm sure they'd rather forget their present. Sixers and Celtics. Tim Legler breaks down Philly's new lineup and post game reactions from LeBron after the Lakers and Hawks. Sports Center after college basketball and also on the ESPN app. Jimmy, I'm of the opinion that every now and then, a good old fashioned fanny paddling is good for the soul. Yep. If that's true, Duke's soul ought to be nice and clean. <laughs> yes, it right should. After tonight, because they are getting their tails kicked. Yeah, their backsides will be sore as well. Got held. I mean, Barrett held him. Yep. And it was Malik Williams who was working the offensive glass, had better position, and Barrett was called for the foul. Best offensive rebounders are guys that are willing to take the physical punishment. Game after game after game. And Louisville's got a couple of dudes, Williams and Enoch in particular, Sutton out throwing that group as well. They're willing to take the punishment. And Duke hasn't given a ton of resistance. Duke doesn't box off well. Mm -hmm. Watch it on film the last three games, and, and Louisville staff talked about as well that they, they go find the ball, but they don't find bodies. And Louisville has exposed them in this ball game tonight because of it. Now let's look at it from the other side. It's Reddish finally gets one to go for the Blue Devils and cuts the lead to 20. Duke will go with full court pressure. From Louisville's standpoint, look, they had a, a similar performance on the road in Chapel Hill this year, which they just took North Carolina apart and they just beat the 10 second count. But this type of game can really continue to grow the confidence of this Cardinal team. Kristen Cunningham, double figures in assists, but still looking for his first bucket. Well, it's over, but it's not over. Because Duke's a team that can go on a 10-0 run about as well as anybody in college ball. Laura with another rebound. That should give Jordan a double-double. 
Louisville played way too fast on their last offensive possession. Don't lose your aggressiveness, but slow down. You're just you're playing crazy right now if you're Louisville the last two possessions. Oh. And this wow. way up by Goldwire. Jordan has really struggled from the floor. He's now 5 of 30 on the season. Cunningham looking for another assist. And Williams. Chris Mack asking the same thing. What, what, what are we doing? What are you doing? You're up against the number two team in the country. They are on the ropes. Put them away. Williamson offensive rebound and he'll go to the free throw line. The foul is called on Malik Williams. The under eight minute media timeout. Louisville up by 20. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. He loses a heartbreaker here to a really talented LSU team. I mean, that baby came right down to the last second. But now they got to regroup and face the number one team in the nation, a veteran team with a terrific combination in Williams and Schofield. How will they respond? I think John Calipari is a master in getting his kids ready. It should be one heck of a basketball game. One top five team going down there. Dick Vitale and Carl Ravitch on the call. Might have another one. Looks like we're going to here in Louisville or Sonic Blockbuster Saturday, the game Dick was talking about. Tennessee and Kentucky and Rupp. Jay Williams, Seth Greenberg, Jay Billis joining me for college game day. Going to do it at Memorial on campus yeah. close to the students uh, at Kentucky. First time we've done that in all of our trips there. Zion makes one of two. And congratulations to our buddy Dick Vitale. Absolutely. Getting a lifetime Achievement Award at the Sports Emmys this year. Well deserved. Guy with a huge, huge heart. Great memories of Memorial Gym where you will be on Saturday when I was assistant coach of Kentucky. Still remember my first night on the job. I slept in my office because the, the old blue couch of Adolph Rupp was still there, and that's where I wanted to sleep. <laughs> just just kind of <laughs> absorb it all one night, you know? It was really cool. Now, what was your last year? Because Rupp opened at 86. No, no, it was open for 85. Yeah, we were, yes. championship yeah. Game. I was there at like 88, 89, 90, right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Here is Reddish, knocking down three. And I told you it was over, but it's not over. And, and Louisville, they had a two bad possessions back to back, and they had a chance to put this thing completely away. And Duke now with that full court pressure, and Louisville better handle this ball and be strong with it. So they're a turnover and a dunk away of having some a little bit of game pressure on them. As Max said, he wanted quick game pressure on Duke, and she might be on the other foot shortly, but just like that. Dwayne Sutton has a big answer in the lead. And goes back to 19. He's really the heart of the program. To me, Sutton is. Just a warrior, just a blue-collar guy that Chris Mack is going to build his program around. Guys like him. Zion gets between two, and he'll get the end one. Hard to put Duke away. It's hard to put number one in white away. The power that he has to go through double teams. Watch right here. Just splits two guys and then the strength to get it up through the hard contact of Enoch. Not very many guys in college ball could do it. A lot of contact on him, but he gets those shoulders square. Power move with, with a finesse finish. Very difficult to pull off. Williamson shooting for his 20th point tonight. The make will come and so will the press by Duke. 20 points now for Zion. 16 point game. Sixth game this year for Williamson with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Jordan Goldwire forces a turnover three. Jones lays it in, and just like that, yep. back to 14. Yep. And Chris Mack wants a timeout. Rich, we, we just felt it. I, I did like three minutes ago. I said the game's over, but it's not over. And it depends on what Louisville does, and they did not execute for about a two minute stretch and now that game pressure that we were talking about it is on in this building you can feel it and the kid has been so clean with the ball gets careless with it go wide with the hot hands and Trey Jones with an easy pit and there's some life in that Duke bench really for the first time this this night we are doing this and uh, coach K talked to you and I today about there's actually times as a head coach and he kind of loses his confidence or his direction in terms of what he's going to tell his guys. But he says, as a leader, 
you talk your way back into it and you walk your way back into it. A phenomenal leader that you know right now, he's sending a message to his guys. We have not played well, but there's six minutes to go and we're right back in this thing. He, he calls it having a great face. And I asked him, because I was listening to the Basketball Beyond show that he did and the conversation he had with Roger Federer, and he used that term. And I asked Mike today, what is a great face? And he said it was those things, things he learned at the United States Military Academy, that when you doubt and you're in a leadership position, you can't let that show. And so right now, Duke needs to see if they have a championship and a winning face to make a run at Louisville, who candidly has outplayed Duke in every facet yes. of the game for the vast majority of the night. Absolutely, they have. Coach K has had a poker face on all night long. But you saw the passion in that Duke bench going into that last timeout. The 2-2-1 two -two continues. And Louisville looks a little shook right now. Oh, that's four, you don't want to pick it up there. Oh, yeah. Another turnover almost. Four gets it back. And they call a timeout because Quan was rolling over. He's probably fortunate that he didn't get called for the trap. Absolutely is. He took the ball to the hot spot against that 2-2-1. Two -two the second line defense collapsed with the first line defense. And now Chris Mack has to have a great face with his guys. <laughs> and that makes sure the message is we've outplayed him. We're going to continue to outplay him. Four right there makes the mistake instead of getting the ball to the middle or reversing it. He dribbles it and kind of slow dribbles. Very similar to picking it up. And when you spin around the timeline against a 2 2 1, you might as well have a sign that says, Come take the ball from me because that's exactly what's going to happen. Now Louisville just has one more timeout, so they're going to need to solve this full court pressure. Still enough time in this game there were a couple of turnovers in that span when Louisville had the huge lead that they would have been better off drop kicking the ball into the second absolutely then let it be live ball and let Duke get a couple easy baskets and get a little rhythm going but Louisville has had an answer for every charge tonight and there's another live ball turnover Trey Jones has it knocked away and a great saving play by Sutton who's doing it all and Jones is a little slow getting up and another turnover here comes Williamson and, and he goes to the deck and he'll shoot a couple a ton of contact though on the first breakaway you've got a guy going full speed in the air and Watch right here. Trey Jones leaves the ground. That's a foul. That is a foul. That is a foul that should have been called. And honestly, maybe could have been called and gone to look to see if it was an F1. Now Williamson will shoot a couple and he makes the first. Let's see what Coach K thought about the non-call. Well, th those are plays that get guys hurt. And uh, that's that's been emphasized to the officials that, that, that if you're in doubt, go ahead and make the call. Well, that was a hard fall now, and the game pressure is alive and well in this building for the Duke fans that are here. Blue Devils have scored the last seven. Terry gets it into the front court, and Jones almost picked his pocket. Somebody for Louisville has to want the ball. Right now, it looks like I don't want the ball. Give it to someone else. Be a man, make a cut, own your spot, move the ball. Cunningham in a world of trouble and has it taken away by Williamson. Barrett working on Perry. Euro me for the Canadian and it's back to a 10 point game with five and change to go. And reports of Duke's demise has been greatly exaggerated. They were on the ropes. They weren't saying cut me Mick but it was close. And they'll call Goldwire for the reach and Coach K's less than pleased with that decision. Yeah, he's, he's uh, giving Doug Shouse an earful right now. Louisville in the double bonus. But Coach K went to that zone, and you know, you're down 20 on the road, and you think, is zone the right call? This guy trusts his gut, and he went to that zone, and, and, and Louisville bought into it and fired up a couple of quick ones. Then he got his zone press working, and Louisville trying to hang on. Sutton calmly, coolly. Knocks down the free throw. Louisville could not get open against Florida State, and they're going to have to get open now with five minutes to go in the game. They're going to have to cut like a man. They're going to have to scream like a man. They're going to have to move like a man to finish this thing off. 
And they're going to have to make free throws in all likelihood, which Dwayne Sutton just did. Defending wouldn't hurt either. Reddish, a long three, the fight for the rebound, and it'll stay on this end. Artie, that was too much room for Reddish. You've got to stay tight now. The, the, the gaps have been important all game long to Louisville. And now those gaps may need to get a, a little bit looser. Barrett back to Williamson. And they're going to get Enoch. Now don't forget here, Jimmy, Zion Williamson's playing with four, four fouls. Yeah. Now he drew the foul that time. But the Bears, Bears watching me he's, because he's been aggressive on the defensive end. I mean, yep. look, you might as well be because. Sure. I mean, yeah, they have no other way to down, play right now. Down a dozen. But he's only fouled out once this year. He, he has the ability to control his body and control his mind and, and not have to sit. Again, the second free throw RD is so important because the 2 2 1 is going to be set if Coach, Coach K gets this one to drop. Zion, 6 of 7 from the free throw line tonight, a little under 70% on the year, and now 7 of 8. Full court pressure. Laura looking for help. Trey Jones working on Cunningham. Laura does a good job getting into the middle. Settles everybody down. Perry thought about it. Sutton won't think. He'll just fire, and Williamson has it, and Duke can get it back to single digits. He should have thought. He shot it with 15 on the shot clock. Williamson and one. The most feared thing in college basketball is number one with the letters D U K E on the front of it coming at you in transition. Bam, that burst, that power, and the finesse finish. So difficult and hard to guard. He goes left and lefter, and he stayed left the entire distance that time with a push. Jimmy, you mentioned it, how quickly the Blue Devils could get back into yes. the game. You've got to have some double cuts right now. Cunningham's the only one that wants the ball. Goldwire. Goldwire's come off the bench and given them some defensive energy, too. He's gotten a lot of deflections, and he's been a good tag team partner with Jones in this press. And you mentioned it earlier, Jimmy. Louisville looks tentative. Like, they're not sure who they really want to wind up with the ball. Well, it looks like they're going to try to position Enoch just to get the ball in bounds because now he's frozen in that deep corner. Enoch is a high, tall pressure release. Right now, McMahon, Sutton, they're all running from the ball, but now Perry comes in. And he's going to have to step up and be a second handler with Cunningham. And McMahon's in the game, too. And they're going to call the foul on Goldwire for holding McMahon. Coach K felt, felt like the Cunningham held Goldwire. Well, you don't want to foul there because that's a, such a hard, a hard spot to inbounds the ball, and happened right in front of the Duke bench. You mentioned it, R.D. Louisville's going to have to close this thing out from the strike. McMahon's a brilliant free throw shooter. He's made 51 of 54. He's a 94 percenter and 17 straight. Never a doubt. You know what? I, I, I teach free throw shooting. I think the best ones do what this kid does. He doesn't stare it down. I don't like guys that get it and stare the rim down for 10 seconds. And this is a guy that just uh, going to go through his routine a little bit, get that head down, and they're up, set, nothing but the bottom. That, that's a very clean and very easily to repeat free throw stroke by McMahon. 19 in a row now, 66 57. Reddish got fouled on the three by Wara. Now Reddish will have a chance if he can knock in all three to get it to a two possession game. Well, the step back right there is terrific, and Ward just bit on the step back. It's a little off balance. You got to protect that shooter until he comes back down on the ground. It's the right call to make. What an effort and a toughness that Duke has shown in this ball game to fight their way back now to 66-58. In this building, which was ready to blow the roof off earlier now, 
Those donning black tonight seemingly ill at ease as the Blue Devils keep inching closer and closer. He said it was 20, correct? I got yeah. that the 9-10 minute mark, well, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. It was 23, 23. was the biggest lead. There was no panic by Kay and no panic by his guys. And here we go again. That's oh, trouble. That's a tough one. Cunningham saves it, and he'll pull it out of there. We were very fortunate they didn't turn it over, but then they did. Barrett jumped into the passing lane. R.J. working on Cunningham. R.J. Barrett, it's a five-point game with just over three and a half to play. Louisville is in serious trouble. They have no one that wants the ball right now. They have no one that's comfortable with the ball right now. And Duke is smelling it. Remember I talked about when you're riding a bull, if the bull smells fear, Duke smells it right now. Louisville just used its last timeout. They are hanging on by their fingernails. Five-point game in the Ville. Duke was down by 23 points in the second half, but the Blue Devils have fought their way back to within five. Well, they've done it in a lot of ways, but again, we talked about what Zion Williamson can do and R.J. Barrett, but the defense of Duke, they flipped the switch. They started in a zone, Louisville took a couple of bad shots, the full court press got set, and then Louisville just got completely scrambled. And now Duke right now is getting anything they want. You can get hot in a game defensively just as quickly as you can get hot offensively. Duke is scorching hot right now, R.D., on the defensive end. This would be... Now look, they're, they're still down five. They haven't come back yet. But if Duke should overcome this second half deficit, it would be the biggest comeback of the Coach K era. And the second biggest second half comeback in Duke history. Duke has outscored Louisville 25-7 since Zion Williamson returned to the floor playing with four fouls. Louisville out of timeouts. Zion four fouls and yet another turnover for the Cardinals. That's number 15. Holding the ball above your head and no pass fake is an automatic steal right now in this ball game. Reddish for three. We're down by two. I guess it's hard to put the number two team away, huh? It is indeed. Reddish with 17. McMahon better do something with it. Now War is in the front court. And he's going to chew him up with no timeouts. No timeout. He can't call it. Chris Mack looks frustrated over on the side. Wara going to try to answer. And he does. Jordan Wara. 23 for Wara. Headed toward two minutes to go. Reddish again. Fires for three. It won't go. Williamson can't get it. And Cunningham clears it away for Louisville. Trey Jones steals and scores. I know Cunningham slipped. I think he slipped a little bit, but Trey Jones lit up the basketball as soon as Louisville got possession. The heat was instant, and the heat paid off for three and white. He has not played a good game. Not like he has been, but at a key moment, a huge steal and two by three and white. Watch Cunningham slips, right? Yeah, right there. That, that left, left foot went out from underneath him where Zion went down. And a bad break and a bad spot, but again, credit the heat that Duke is bringing in this ball game defensively. And they continue to bring it. Wara now better watch Jones. He picks it up in a tough spot, but moves it quickly. Tony having no timeout for Chris Mack right now is very worrisome to him. His guys just have to play. They got to play through, move the ball, play like a man right now with 140 to go. Shot clock in single digits. McMahon cutting, fires it up. Williams fighting for the rebound, and Trey Jones has it. Duke with a three could tie. Reddish for the tie. Yes, sir! Are you kidding me? Goldwire got a hand on it, and another turnover, and Louisville is coming unraveled. A complete meltdown by the Louisville Cardinals. And a complete, we will fight you to the very end by the Duke Blue Devils. Watch this play in transition. It starts off a terrific job, but just to know it's a field pass from Barrett to Reddish. Reddish just trailed the play, 
saying, you almost act like a blocker for me, and I'll be here to stick it. A 69-69 game. It was over, but it wasn't over. Coach K makes the defensive switch. They flip the switch, and here we go. Reddish with 20 tonight, Jimmy, his fifth straight game with at least three threes. He's got four of them tonight, none bigger than the one that tied the game. We haven't been tied since there was 940 left in the first half, and the Blue Devils have an opportunity to take the lead in this possession. Reddish again. Online, we're right in line. He was online just a little long. So his legs are still good in this game. That's a good sign if you're going to miss. Under a minute. Let's see who will step up for Louisville. Uh, War is your best offensive player, but somebody's going to have to make a play off the bounce to set up a shot. It's just all catch around the perimeter right now with eight to go on the shot clock. Now they're up against the clock again. Wara rims out. Duke has it again. About a seven second difference. Shot clock and game clock. Tied at 69. Coach K wants a timeout, RD. I mean, he, he understands he's got young kids. And he's been so simple, brilliant offensively, in my opinion, all year long. In terms of how he has simplified the game for his guys. I would have preferred to bring the ball over in front of the bench if I'm Coach K. Just in case you get stuck over there, it's a lot easier to have your guys' attention. Because it's going to be taken away all the way over here in front of us, away from, uh, away from Duke's bench. But where do you go with this ball game? With 30 seconds to go, 23 on the shot clock. The good thing about Coach K in that huddle, he's got a lot of options, and they're all good. And what, so what would you do right now, based on what you would expect from Louisville, what would you want in this possession yeah. to do? Well, you're always worried about getting it in. And so if you're Chris Mack right now, you've got to get your guys' energy and their fight level back up. You can't just sit back right now and let Duke do what they want to do. Well, Duke's going to get this ball in because they're, I think they're really good in these type of situations. I haven't seen them, you know, muffle punt in special team in, uh, terms. And it's just a, they've been an isolation team all year long. So Coach K is going to get probably Zion isolated, you know, with options for, for uh, Barrett or Reddish. Trey Jones has not been a, a great facilitator tonight, but he has been all season long. This will be some type of a spread floor situation, but it will end with an isolation, trusting a player to make a play. It'll be some type of action to get that guy where Coach K wants the ball and he told us today even for a young team he will ask his guys what are you seeing what are you feeling where do you want the ball in this game I'm sure he asked Zion I'm sure he asked Cam and uh, I'm sure he asked RJ Baird as well those turnovers Jimmy and the number of steals that Duke yeah. had ridiculous it's uh, really impressive to Duke and very shaky for Louisville I remember Zion Williamson will put his head down and go to the bucket but he's playing with four fouls that doesn't matter if you can get it, but you also don't want to commit the offensive foul and turn the ball over. Yeah, it's going to be a just a spread play and an isolation for Zion. Let him go to work. Working on Malik Williams. Now here's Reddish, who's had a great night. Reddish goes in Sorry. and an offensive foul. McMahon does a great job stepping in and drawing it. Was he not in the restricted arc? I thought he was in the restricted said arc. No. Let's have a look and see where his feet were. Great shot here. Uh, he's in the arc. Yeah, yeah he's he in sure the arc. is. Clearly in the arc. Zion went with the ball screen, dribble handoff. And uh, and Reddish was going in and clearly in the restricted arc. And the Doug Shaw's over the monitor right now, giving it a look see. 14.9 to go. And it was Reddish going on the drive who's had big second half shooting, clutch shots. You know, those restricted arc plays, it's it's in, on, or above the arc. He was clearly in the arc. He wasn't even he on, on, on or above it. He was in it. Now there is Doug Shouse, Jeff Clark over, over looking at the monitor and they're coming over to talk to Jamie Lucky. The conference continues and they go over to tell Mike Krzyzewski and Chris Max. 
what the decision is. Well, it's an easy call. We need it gone. You've seen it. The restricted art call. So the crowd doesn't like it. Jeff Clark just telling Jimmy just what we saw here. You see clearly the left foot of Ryman Mann's in the arc. You yeah. can't draw a charge there. So now the foul is on him. And Reddish has the opportunity to give Duke the lead with 14.9 to go. And he does. Now Louisville has no timeouts, no timeouts. to set their offense. Yeah, Chris Mack, but he had time to talk to his guys when during the official review. If I'm Duke, I, I, I stay up with my pressure right now. Absolutely. The right call was made. The review was there. Easy to see. It was an isolation play. A little bit of a dribble handoff, but again, Coach K said just go make a play. Sign if you have the gaps down the pipes, go. If not, hand off and make it work. Under, under 10 minutes to play, Jimmy. Louisville was up by 23. And the defense sparked this time. Absolutely has. They, they, Duke, they, they, they flipped the switch. And it was their defense that did it. Their, their hands got hot, and they just really started cramping the game. And it started when he went zone. And I talked about it. I said, it's, it's, it's interesting that Coach K, with a gut feeling to go zone when he's down plus 20 on the road. But Louisville took the bait. They fired a couple of quick threes, and it kind of ignited this Duke comeback. And now it's a... And you get the ball to the rim, get it up on the rim, and possibly let Enoch come in for an offensive cleanup, very similar to what LSU did to Kentucky, that maybe send this thing to overtime. Awara's had a big night, very dangerous shooter. He inbounded the ball. Cunningham for 10 seconds. Wara popping out. Sets the success. screen. Cunningham over goal wire. Zion Williamson pulls it away, and the Blue Devils with a comeback for the ages. The biggest second half comeback in Mike Krzyzewski's career at Duke. What a win for number two. Well, when you have number one, <laughs> it's hard to put away number two. A manic competitor is Zion Williamson, and it feeds to everybody else. Coach K never panicked. His guys never panicked. Louisville coughed it up, but Duke brought the fight when they had to bring the fight, R.D. 71-69, Steve Levy, John Anderson, Sports Center night. For Brooke Weisbro and Jimmy Dykes, I'm Reese Davis. We're going to come right back here to the Yum Center. Thanks for watching. Let's go to Sports Center. We'll talk to you in a second.